Today we're going to be learning how to rewire Propellerhead's Reason into Apple's Logic Pro. The first thing we need to do is open up Logic. Create an empty project. Now let's head into Logic's Audio Preferences. By default, your rewire behavior should be set to off. We're going to need to set it to playback mode. Once you're done, click apply. To make sure that everything runs smoothly, let's go ahead and restart Logic. Make sure to completely exit the application and start it up again. Let's create an empty project but this time, let's make sure we're creating an audio track. Next, you'll want to open Logic's Mixer by pressing X. Create an auxiliary channel, and now we're ready to open up Reason. You'll notice that we're running in rewire mode, which is exactly what we need. Let's go back into Logic for a moment and set our auxiliary channel's input to Reason's master output. Under Reason, we're going to select the first channel, Mix Left Right. We don't need to worry about these other channels for now. Let's make sure that everything's working by loading up a patch and reason. Click Run. You'll notice that we're getting output from reason, but nothing into logic just yet. That's because our volume fader is all the way at zero. Let's start bringing it up. And as you can hear, we're getting sound from reason into Logic Pro. The next thing you'll want to do is create a new external MIDI track. You'll be needing this to control Reason's instruments using Logic Pro's MIDI sequencer. Let's open up the library and under Reason you will have access to all the instruments within Reason that you create. They'll all appear under this panel. So let's go ahead and select the track I created. They're now connected. To make sure that everything's working, let's go ahead and draw a box. Let's open up the MIDI sequencer and test it out for ourselves. As you can hear, everything seems to be working just fine. Now the next thing you'll want to consider is learning how to bounce instrument tracks from Reason into Logic. The reason you'll want to start working this way is because running both applications at the same time can be quite demanding on your CPU. In the hopes of making your workflow more efficient, I'll be covering this in the next part of this tutorial series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until then, thanks for watching.